Hello and welcome to today's art class and today we're going to do these daffodils. Now what I'd like you to look at first is one single daffodil and look at the shape. Now how many petals? Okay, so six petals around the outside. Notice how they overlap. So there's an overlap with them. And then notice this part, the trumpet, if you like, that's coming out from the center. And it's, it's about slightly less than the size of the petal. So it's always nice in your composition to use three flowers. So an odd number, three or five. And when we put the flowers together, it's important with the composition if you've got this shape so you've got some petals and you've got this trumpet because that says daffodils otherwise we risk having something that's just a sort of blur of yellow so all we need to do is to take our three I'm using three but you can use five and put them together so we've got them in slightly different uh, perspectives so we'll have one that looks like this and so you can see some of the petals and the trumpet and some of the petals behind. Then we're going to have another one that will maybe go up like this. And another one, and this is the risky one, will be from the front. So can you see now we've got all our petals overlapping and we've got this trumpet in the middle. And you can see, tell me where the shadow is because we can't draw it all we can't do it all the same color we're going to have to do different tones of the yellow notice these little parts here it's quite crinkly round here so it's not just a straight line it's a crinkly shape and as we go in we can see that the i'm sure there's a technical word for these bits in the middle but not being a botanist i've no idea what it is these little bits in the middle you'll know what they are good so once you've decided on your composition, then you'll be doing your sketch. So here is one I've prepared, and I'm going to send this to you as a PDF. And uh, normally it wouldn't be outlined in felt tip pen, of course, but I've done that, and I hope you can see on the video, I hope the lines are... Peter's, Peter's nodding his head, so obviously the lines are fine. Right. So when we do our composition, you can see this one. I've got the trumpet and the five, six petals around it. This one is going up. I've got the trumpet and the six overlapping petals around the edge. And this one is from the front. Very important when you're doing your composition is because we're going to do a dark background. Now, you all remember dark backgrounds. What's the problem with dark backgrounds? What do we need to do? We need to make quite small shapes because they're much easier to fill in than doing large shapes. So, make sure when you do your composition, you've got some nice interesting shapes in between. Also, very important, do not do your stems so they just go straight down. Also, don't make them so they come into a V-shape. So you've got three stems, make them quite interesting at the bottom of your composition. So what I'm going to do now, uh, lost my pencil, okay, found the pencil, is draw the outline of your composition. We're doing this square, and so, I've made that join the frame. I've made that join the frame. Why have I done that? Because you've got this area to paint now instead of the whole area to paint, which is more difficult. And you've got uh, this area here, which is easy. These bits are easy. These tiny bits are easy. And now we're going to cheat a bit because what we're going to do now is we're going to do some leaves in here so I've cut it up even more and something going off the top here so again I've only got to paint this bit now and this bit not the whole thing right that's the end of session one looking forward to doing session two 
Hello and welcome to session two of our daffodils. So at this stage of the game you've got your sketch of your daffodils. Um, I've outlined mine in felt tip pen uh, so yours will hopefully not look like this. So what we need to do now is to transfer our sketch onto our watercolour paper and here is the watercolour paper I have prepared. You will notice that I staple my watercolour paper onto a board after soaking it for about 10 minutes in water. Why do I do this? I do this so that when I put the paint on it won't buckle the paper as much because if you have paper that's very buckled the pigment from the watercolour will all go into the the buckly bits, if you like, the bits that are lowest. <laughs> so, um, what we're going to do, we can do this uh, two ways. We can either sketch it out freehand or we can use this carbon paper. So I've got two bits of carbon paper here and one is a new piece. You probably on the video can't see much a different difference between them, but all I would say is be very careful with a new piece because it will probably smudge. So as we all know, you have to have the dark side down. So we're going to stick your picture, just tape it on with a couple of pieces of tape on the top. Just like that, that's enough. So this you can lift up and down and this will move around so you can sketch it out. So here is one we've sketched out. So we'll put that one aside for the moment and the next thing we're going to look at is colour. So it's a really good idea to start with a clean palette. So what we've got here is a cleanish, cleanish palette. Um, so um, choosing the colours is very important because basically if you don't like the colours you won't like your painting. We're doing daffodils, so the first colour is a bit of a no-brainer. We have to use a bright yellow. So here we've used lemon yellow. With our daffodils, we're going to add some um, orangey tones in. So I've chosen Madder Lake. But we've chosen three different types of blue. So I've chosen Prussian, Cobalt and Ultramarine. So you, what happens next is you take three pieces of scrap paper and we've got first, let's look at our three blues. The three blues are quite different, so this one is a bit pale. This one is cobalt. This one is Prussian. You can see the difference there in the blues. And this one is ultramarine. So you can see a lot more green in that blue. Those ones are similar, but can you see there's a little bit more red in the ultramarine. When you're mixing your colors, let's start with the first one. Let's start with some Prussian. So the objective is to have lots of different colours, not just one colour on your paper. Wash your paintbrush quite well. So here I'm going to add some yellow. And can you see that green is quite bright? That's great, you may want that. Then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. And then I'm going to add the red to make the orange. So that's the sort of look you want. In an area like this, you've got lots and lots of colours here. You haven't just got one. They're all blending together and that's what you want. So next one, we're going to use cobalt. Here's your cobalt. Here's your yellow. You can see how the green is not quite so bright little bit more yellow and then we add the red here. Of course you can also then go back 
and add a little bit more blue. So this is the sort of idea you want. You don't want to be mixing your colours like this. This, this doesn't help you at all because there you've only got three colours so you don't know what they're going to look like when they all blend together. Let's do the last one. The last one is ultramarine. It's a nice bit of ultramarine. And then when we add the lemon yellow here, you'll find the green is certainly a dull olive green colour. A little bit more yellow. And then... Yeah, add a little bit of red, a bit more yellow. Red, blend them together, and then if you want, you can add a little bit more of the blue, and you'll get the purple. So you, from those three colours, you've actually got a fantastic range of lots of different colours. And it's up to you to decide now which of these three that one, that one, or that one, you actually want to use. Hello, welcome back to uh, our daffodils and now we have section three. So I've chosen the colours that I'm going to use and you notice if you look at my palette, I have taken away the two blues that I'm not going to use. Now why have I done this? I've done this so that when I'm painting without thinking, I don't dip my paintbrush into the wrong blue. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mix up some yellow in here. So you notice I'm just putting water into the palette here and then I'm going to put in some yellow and then I'm going to test it on the paper and that's quite dark so I'm going to add a little bit more yellow. This is not good so if you've got this yellow on your paintbrush make sure you've really blended it in. A little bit more, a little bit more, test it again. Yeah that's not too bad. Right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint yellow over the whole thing. Do make sure you've got enough paint mixed up. There is nothing worse than getting um, halfway through your painting and then you've got to stop and mix up more paint. So, okay, so off we go. If you find as you're painting it that it's too dark, then just dip a bit of water in and add a bit of extra water. If you can see also, it's not completely uh, the same colour all the way across. That doesn't matter. That's quite good. Okay. If occasionally you get some tiny little white bits, don't worry about those. Those are good. Right, so. Don't forget, uh, your painting will dry slightly lighter. If you've got a frame on your painting, make sure you've painted over the frame. Right. So what I've got to do now is I'm going to have to dry it with a hairdryer. So we're going to pause the video for a moment while I dry it. Hello, welcome back. Okay, so um, now you can see I've painted the yellow background on here and I've dried it with the hairdryer and it is completely dry. Uh, it's really important to make sure that your paper is flat. If your paper has any sort of bulges and ripples in it, it means it's not dry. And if your paper isn't dry, then you can end up with cauliflowers or unusual effects, which might be what you want, then they might look great. But uh, damp paper is always unpredictable. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave the daffodils and we're going to paint around the background. So I'm going to mix up, when I found glasses, 
our colour and we're going to add some of the yellow, we can use some of this and we're going to add some blue and test it here, well that's quite good and we're going to mix, I'm going to start, I'm going to turn the board upside down and I'm going to get one of these little things that still, I hope that's okay still with the video and I'm actually going to sit down now so let's paint very quickly around this petal here, going off the edge of the paper. And here we've got a little leaf. So the good thing about having the leaves in here, oh, a splodge, lovely, is it's easier to paint around. Oh, two splodges. <laughs> Good splodges are not necessarily bad things. Okay, let's have that leaf there and go there. Okay, so you can see here we've got the first daffodil coming out. Paint up here. Use the tip of your brush. Add a bit more blue. Ooh, yes, that's a good colour. And you can see now how, because I've made this petal come off the edge of the frame, it's easier to paint these shapes. Continue around this shape here. A few little textured bits. And around here. Okay, so moving around, I can now move around my board and carry on painting. If you can't see where your daffodils are, it might be a good idea just outlining them with a water-soluble crayon or very likely with a 2B pencil. It's quite important to be able to see where you're painting. Stems and leaves coming here, got another little leaf coming off here. And then what I want to do is make it a little bit more blue. some red in the these flowers and it's quite nice just to have a little bit of red in the background as well. I'm painting round some of these stems and painting over others of them. We want to have some that are dark and some that are light.
Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to pause the video again and dry it off. Okay, good. So I've got the second layer done. So the first layer was the pale yellow for the daffodils and the second layer is this mixture of darker colours and I've got this uh, slightly red area here because there is going to be some red in the daffodils and we do want the colours to be throughout the whole painting. It's not a good idea for your composition to have uh, all blue in one area and all yellow in another area and all red. So what I'm going to do is just finish off this section by just painting in a few dark leaves one brush stroke okay so we're going to put a few of these leaves in that's not working well why is that not working well because look they're parallel so we will get rid of that one and we'll make it go that way because we don't want to have parallel lines and let's just put some uh, some stems in here and a leaf maybe in there so just adding a few darks a bit of red here Now you can see I've got lines going like this, so I do need to have something going up this way in a different direction. We don't want to have parallel lines. So let's put that one here. So just before you finish, do go back to your daffodils and do make sure that you know where they are because the next section we're going to actually paint daffodils and obviously some of them are a little bit ragged so it's not too bad but some of them you maybe want to touch up a bit while you've still got the um, colours in your palette. Um, make them a little bit smooth, there's a bit of a mess here so maybe... I can just smooth off that a little bit. Okay, and maybe just smooth off that a little bit. There, that's okay. That's okay. That's okay. So um, that's okay for the, for the moment. So this is the end of this section and we'll get back to doing the daffodils uh, next time around. Hello and welcome to session four. I think we're on session four now. Of course. So the, this is uh, as far as we've got on this um, daffodil um, composition and so what we're going to do now is what the basic shapes of the daffodils and we're going to put the uh, shadows and some different colours in the sh in the daffodils. So I've gone back and got myself some more daffodils and I think you will not be able to see the light is coming from here in my composition but in actual in my composition it's it's not coming from here. This is only for the sake of getting the video on the right side so when I started doing this composition the light was actually coming from this side. So if we take this daffodil, as I see you say, you won't be able to see the same um, um, lighting as I've done, but you can see, uh, perhaps if I move it a little bit closer, you can see how it's darker in here than it is on this section here. And as we look at the petals, uh, there are some dark bits and there are some light bits. So what... Uh, you can do is either find yourself a daffodil but what I'm going to do is to go back to my original sketch and just take 
the uh, that's a 5B pencil and I'm just going to just work out that the light is coming from this direction and therefore this bit here is going to be light so I'm just going to darken up that bit there these, these petals are underneath so they are going to be darker and maybe by the time I get down here they're going to be lighter you've got an overlap here so you have to decide which petals are going to go on the top and which petals are underneath. So you're probably going to have that bit even darker there because that petal is underneath that petal. Then you're going to have a slightly lighter shadow on that section there. Still quite a dark petal because it's still away from the light. This one the light's hitting it here so you're going to have a darker area here. And here, see, there's an overlap here. This one's on top of this one, so a little bit darker here. Okay, this one is perhaps a bit darker on that section there. And this section will be darker here. We'll leave that one for the moment. Now in here, you're going to have a darker area and then a lighter area here. Right, so if you can see that, those are the shadows I've put on that daffodil. So basically what you need to do is then go and do the other two daffodils and as they always say here is one I've already prepared. Okay, okay so um, uh, we've done the, the shading on one and here is one I've already prepared, so you can see how now I've done the shading on daffodils two and three. So let's talk about colour. Uh, you can see here my palette, and you'll notice that I've washed most of the palette. And now I'm thinking maybe we do need to have a, another colour. So the other colour I'm going to choose is a raw sienna. So I've got some raw sienna in my palette and just if I can mix up some of the raw sienna with the blue you can see that's quite going to be a quite a good colour for a shadow. So let's stick now with our four colours and we'll start painting the shadows. Let's start with, I'm going to put this here so that I can see the shadows. And let's start here with these two colours. We're going to have some more of the lemon yellow. We're going to have some of the raw sienna. And we're going to use some of the blue and we're going to put some of the red in. So we're going to have a mixture of all those four colours. So let's start with the light bit here and we'll add the dark bit coming there. Don't forget these crinkly bits that you've got here. Okay. And then smudge that in, a little bit of water and smudge that in so it looks nice and round. Okay. And then I'll show you how to put a bit of this in, so we've got the raw sienna plus a bit of yellow and then we're going to put that bit in here and it's going to go it's going to run into that's fine we're going to have bit of the mixture here, so a darker area here. And forget that the lines on your petals are all going to this point at the end and before, while it's still dry, I'm just going to put a little bit, perhaps a bit too much, in this area here. I've not got my board, that's right. Okay, so just smudge that in, that's smudging too much. Good. 
it's a bit too smudgy so it's all running in a little bit too much so I'm going to start on this one at the top here. Broad strokes, use the point of your brush, use also the broad part of your brush as well. And it's going to be a little bit darker as you come down here. Good, let's have a bit on this one here. It's sometimes a good idea to turn your ball around the other way so you can get at it. And this is the top of the trumpet part. Let's soften that bit off. And then while we're here, we've got another petal. So I've left a little pale bit there. This is where it joins, the trumpet joins the petals and then we've just got this. That's a little bit too dramatic there so I'm going to blend that in. And then all we've got to do is this petal here. So we need a darker bit to start off with. Right, so what I'm going to do now is dry it a bit and then add another layer on top of it. Good, okay, so now I've dried that off. You can tell the paper is flat, so I'm just going to add a few more. I've got to add a little dark bit here so you can see the edge of this trumpet. So let's put a bit of blue, let's put a bit of dark there. And you know this technique, so wash brush, get most of the water off the brush and then just touch that edge so that bit blends in. We've done that bit before. And so now you can see you've got the outline of this petal on here. And we'll do a little bit of... That looks good. And then the next thing we've got to do is this inside of this trumpet here. So it's and the same system again, wash the brush and just soften off that area there. Good and the last thing I want to do. On here is just a little bit more yellow in there. That line is a little bit strong there. A little bit of, a little bit more here. A little bit more here. Add it quite slowly. Um, if, if, you, if you add it slowly, um, you can always dry it and then add more. If you add too much or you add too dark too quickly, then it's quite difficult to remove it again. You can add some of these. One brush stroke. So 
I think that's almost finished for that daffodil. So um, we'll dry it again and we'll carry on with the others. Good. So um, what you can see now on the painting is that I have finished off the other two daffodils and all that remains for us to do now is to do our finishing touches. Now at this stage it's really important to stand up and look away from your painting because we're used to working at an area of a distance of about 30 or 40 centimetres um, away from our painting and it's quite difficult to see from there. So a good idea is to either stand up or even look at your painting in a mirror. Ideally you can put this in your kitchen somewhere and look at it for a few days to see whether you think it's finished or uh, you need to add a few more bits. The danger often is don't overwork it. So if you're not quite sure if it's finished or not, don't fiddle with it. Put it on one side and uh, think about it. So what I'm going to do is I've got some areas that I want to darken up and this uh, line going across here is bothering me slightly so I'm going to actually paint over that bit. just to sort of drop it back a bit. And this bit also, just drop it because it's not quite so uh, dramatic. And then I'm going to turn this round. I'm going to mix up a darkish green and I'm just going to Darken that bit up so that we've got a little bit more depth there. Let's just blend into that, which is not ideal. I'm going to do the same thing with the red and the blue down here. Put your paint on and then wash your brush and then soften up the edge. Have a little leaf coming down there. So you've actually got a little bit more definition on that flower there only by darkening up the background. So the last thing I want to show you is the clean water and this is white gouache. So, which I can't get the top off. Yes, success. So you take your very thin paintbrush and put it in your white and just in those bits there. Good, just the finishing touches and uh, maybe a little bit of light shining on that there, maybe a little bit of light shining on that there. Just let your paintbrush run across this nice bit of dry brush technique here which picks up the texture of your uh, paper. Oh, well, I think um, that's ready to go and sit on my kitchen shelf so I can look at it for a couple of days and uh, I'd be interested to see your paintings, so good luck! <laughs>